Myrta van Bulle, uh, Harriet says, well, inflation is very low, so th- th- this is well, this will have a, a, a minor effect. A lot of people listening who work in the private sector will say, well, public sector workers generally have much better job security than we do. We aren't we aren't getting a pay rise this year. In fact, if we're on furlough, we've had a twenty percent pay cut. We fear for our jobs. Um, it, Everyone would love a pay rise, but in these economic circumstances, could it really be justified to have a blanket rise across the public sector? Well, I mean, inflation is due to be 2% uh, next year. So we're actually looking at a real pay cut uh, for the public sector workers. And the key thing for me is that it comes off the back of 10 years in which we've seen huge pay constraint in the public sector, where we've seen real pay term cuts or freezes. Um, And, you know, the central point is we said at the start of this pandemic that our key workers are the backbone of our communities, they've kept us going um, and that we owe them a debt of gratitude. We also said that actually for the work, vital work they do for us, we don't pay them enough. You know, and for me, the classic example is social care, where actually some of our social care workers that are doing some of the most vital work looking after our loved ones are barely paid the living wage, and in some instances, not the minimum wage. So the idea that we would further compress and push down their pay feels like completely the odd wrong call, in my opinion, particularly when you put it against the economics, which is that we need to be, as Pat said, stimulating the economy. The analysis that we have done at NEF suggests that actually, if we were looking at a pay rise, say 2%, that would boost the economy uh, by about 1 billion to 2 billion in the next year. We need to stoke the economy, therefore contracting pay is not the right economic call.